Doctor Strange has all the best toys to play with. Like, yeah, he's this super powerful sorcerer who casts spells that turn his enemies into, like, umbrellas or something, but he also has at his disposal some of the greatest magical artifacts in the entire universe. His live-action appearances have only scratched the surface in terms of magical artifacts, with them either teasing something powerful but not following through, or just ignoring it altogether. But I have a feeling that will all change with Multiverse of Madness. Which new artifacts will pop up in the sequel? How do they work and just how powerful are they? All that in today's video. Let's get started. Did you know there's an entire chapter devoted to you in the dark hole? The Darkhold feels like it's going to be the key to the upcoming Multiverse of Madness, doesn't it? After being officially introduced in the MCU in WandaVision, the book is basically what's allowing Scarlet Witch to grow her increasingly jaw-dropping abilities and making her one of the most powerful beings in the entire universe. And I guess I need to make a correction. I said WandaVision was where we first saw the Darkhold, but that's not technically true. It's appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and even Runaways, but it feels like one of the reasons we have the multiverse now is for Disney to be like, yeah, all those shows that people liked but didn't fit within our universe due to low ratings or timeline discrepancies just happened in a different universe somewhere. So while the Darkhold has been around, its presence in WandaVision felt like a fresh start and a reintroduction. Currently, Wanda is using it for study material, and chances are it's going to be the key to helping her rescue her children. In the comics, the Darkhold was created by the Elder God, Cthon, and within its pages it holds every form of dark magic ever. It helped create all the horrible monsters on Earth like vampires and werewolves, which means it could tie into the upcoming Blade movie and the very fascinating upcoming MCU Halloween special, Werewolf by Night. Doctor Strange has of course been involved in a lot of Darkhold stories in the comics, with my favorite being the time he once used it to destroy all the vampires on Earth. I mean, it's a cool book. And with Wanda involved with Multiverse of Madness, I have a feeling the Darkhold is about to be the new big MacGuffin in the MCU. Since I talked about the Darkhold, I think it's important to talk next about the Book of Ashanti, which is a text that contains the most powerful Order magic spells. So while the Darkhold deals with chaos magic, the Book of Ashanti deals with Order magic, two sides of a coin as they say. It's interesting in that its spells are defensive and not offensive. I have no idea what's going to happen in Multiverse of Madness, but if the Darkhold is out and about, it would make sense for Strange to discover the Book of Ashanti in order to try to counteract it. It could be a movie about dueling magical books. But, you know, more interesting than that sentence makes it sound? Something that's fascinating is that just this past December, Marvel released a book called Doctor Strange, The Book of Ashanti that offers readers a look at all the mystical artifacts, villains, and locations that are generally associated with Doctor Strange. Is this just a coincidence, or is Marvel trying to prep audiences for the inclusion of the book in the sequel? That's the big question. I mean, right now it's weird that Strange doesn't have the Book of Ashanti in his possession since it's so powerful. What if, as Wanda continues to grow in chaos magic, Strange needs to counteract it by growing in order magic, and the movie ends with a massive order versus chaos fight between the two? I think that would be awesome, don't you? Yes, Doctor Strange is the Sorcerer Supreme, at least in the comics where he didn't blip away for five years, but that doesn't mean he doesn't like to get his hands dirty from time to time. Yes, yeah, sometimes you want to wave your hands in a little circle and cast a spell that makes your enemies barf up day-old sushi or something, but other times you just want to pick up a giant axe and start cleaving things. Do you cleave with axes? That's correct, right? I mean, you could hack things, I guess, but cleaving sounds cleaner, doesn't it? And I think Doctor Strange would like that elegance. Anyway, one artifact that I'm really hoping pops up in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is the Axe of Angarumus. Like, just listen to this backstory. Strange initially found this in a witch's crypt at the center of the moon. The moon of all places. And that's not like moon North Dakota or anything. I'm talking about the actual moon. Like, up in space, because where else would you bury a witch? Anyway, it's a supposedly hums with magic, which is cool and all, but if I was an enemy and then Strange pulls out a giant axe, I wouldn't be curious of its magical properties. I'd be more scared of being cut in half. Strange in the comics actually uses axes more so than a lot of other melee weapons in the comics. And an axe fight was teased in the first Doctor Strange, but here's hoping that Multiverse of Madness ups the axe fighting by at least 100%. 
Okay, something that's really cool that I don't think got enough screen time in the first Doctor Strange is the orb of Agamotto. Probably because the eye of Agamotto gets all the attention. In the movies, it's the giant floating relic that's used to keep an eye on the big magical shield that the three Sancturns cast in order to protect the Earth from other spooky mystical threats. Look, I know that's for big magic threats, but is there a way they could tweak it to protect Earth against, I don't know, big purple aliens or giant celestials? Just a suggestion. Anyways, I like that the orb got a serious size upgrade in the movie compared to the comics. And I hope that the Multiverse of Madness sequel explores its abilities a bit more. Like, did you know that besides being able to pinpoint certain problems around the world, the orb can also be used to travel to Agamotto's personal realm? I want to see it used for that in Multiverse of Madness. Maybe they can tweak it where the orb is what allows people to travel across the multiverse with relative ease. Yeah, I know America Chavez is in the upcoming movie and her power is to punch Starship holes into reality to travel across the different universes, so the orb of Agamotto using that power seems a little moot, but you never know. If the orb just keeps its comic powers of traveling to Agamotto's realm, then maybe that would give us a chance to learn more about that mystical entity? That'd be cool. Clearly in the MCU, one of Doctor Strange's strongest weapons in his arsenal is his Cloak of Levitation. It's basically like the magic rug in Aladdin, but in MCU form. It has its own personality and feelings, but always seems to obey Doctor Strange. At least, unless he's looking at the wrong thing or something. But the Cloak of Levitation might be the MVP of the MCU. It helps keep Strange safe when he's unconscious like it did in Infinity War. It caught Ned Leeds when he was falling in No Way Home. It's a vital member of the team. Like, yeah, it's not fancy magic, or anything like that, but it's proven to be incredibly useful for the Sorcerer Supreme. I mean, where else can we take the Cloak of Levitation? Can it have a meaningful subplot in Multiverse of Madness where it falls in love with Wanda's home curtains? Can we spin off Ned and the Cloak of Levitation into their own Disney Plus show where it's a buddy cop comedy of some sort? I'm just saying the possibilities seem endless, don't they? All kidding aside, the Cloak not only gives Strange a powerful advantage in just about any fight, but it also allows him to do anything with style, and in the hero game, that's half the battle right there. Although it's gone now, it's hard to argue that the Eye of Agamotto was one of Strange's most powerful artifacts. The MCU altered its power and origin a bit by making it what housed the Time Stone, so its powers were mainly all time-related. It's what allowed Strange to trap Dormammu in that time loop, and also what Thanos used to destroy Vision a second time. I would argue it's the most powerful stone, but that's a tough fight for sure. Anyways, in the comics, the Eye of Agamotto is definitely not where the Time Stone is kept. Instead, it basically shows truth. Sounds confusing? I guess it is a little. It can emit an all-revealing light. It can play back recent events. It can allow you to look into another person's soul. And fun fact, it usually can't be used by dark magicians, but rather only those with a pure heart and clean soul. So kind of like a Mjolnir for magic users. Again, in the MCU, it's gone now, but somewhere down the line, I would love to see Strange travel to Agamotto's realm using the orb I mentioned earlier. And some ancient projection of Agamotto is able to reform the Eye of Agamotto without the Time Stone. Strange just feels naked without it, you know? Plus, the Eye was the only thing keeping Dormammu at bay, so what happens now that it's gone? Maybe we all just collectively agree to not tell him? Yeah, let's do that. Did I see that correctly? Did Tony Stark really just lean on the cauldron of the cosmos? How rude. Anyways, besides being a fun Easter egg in Infinity War, you might be asking yourself, what exactly does the cauldron of the cosmos do? Well, let me tell you. It's basically just used to hang out. Yeah, the truth is more complicated than that, but basically the purpose of the cauldron of the cosmos is for Strange to sit around and ponder the huge mysteries of the universe. Like, sure, it can also be used to view deep within space to monitor mystical threats, but I'm much more interested in that pondering aspect. Like, okay, just imagine this. Doctor Strange and Wong are a little tipsy one night, and they invite over all the other Avengers to hang out and sit around the cauldron to talk about the big mysteries in life. This scene would be even more fun than the after-party scene in Age of Ultron. In the first Doctor Strange movie, when Cassilius and his cronies attack the Hong Kong Sanctern, Wong pulls out a fancy-looking artifact in order to defend his territory. Although it doesn't do much, this is actually the Wand of Watum. In the comics, this artifact is actually one of six spread out across the universe, and each of them can store mystical energy in order to create magical blasts, magical shields, open portals, etc. It also has a really interesting design that makes it stand out from all the other wands we see out there. I always love a good 
quest in movies, so somewhere down the line, I'd love to see a side adventure where someone like Wong and maybe the magic-sensitive Ned Leeds go hunting down the rest of the wands to have them all in one place? Okay, you caught me. That's just my ploy to give Wong and Ned more screen time in the MCU. The first Doctor Strange revolved around Cassilius stealing the Book of Cagliostro for nefarious purposes. Overall, it's another powerful book that you probably just don't want to mess with. Okay, I think I've decided that the overall message in the MCU is just to never open a book ever and instead just play video games or, even better, watch more CBR videos. Yeah, that just seems like the safer bet. Overall, the Book of Cagliostro focused on the dark side of mysticism. It's clear the Darkhold is more powerful than this book and potentially more evil, but it still has a fascinating history. The best What If episode had Doctor Strange try to save Christine's life by searching for the library of Cagliostro and stumbling across the ancient being. And because this is just an alternate universe, chances are this library and Cagliostro himself are still alive in our universe. So, in the comics, the Ebony Blade belongs to the Black Knight, and it's clearly not a Doctor Strange artifact, but it almost was in live action. Let me explain. Originally, the Ebony Blade was planned to be in the first Doctor Strange movie as a prop and one of the many mystical relics we see in the background. Based on original TV spots, it seems like the end fight in Doctor Strange featured more fighting but was ultimately cut, and it's rumored and theorized that the Ebony Blade would have been seen and used at this point. How crazy would that have been? If they kept that, then these later movies would have had a stronger connection between Doctor Strange and Dane Whitman, who is gearing up for big things in the MCU. It's really clear now that Doctor Strange is one of the cornerstones of the MCU, and the hero that knows just about everything that's going on, so maybe there's still time to develop a bond between Dane and the good Doctor? Who knows? Dragon Fang swords really live up to their name in the MCU. They're powerful swords that have hilts forged from dragon teeth. They were carried by the Valkyrie into battle, and if you saw someone with one of these, you probably won't be around for very long. This was an interesting departure from the comics where Dragon Fang is actually just one sword. And yes, although it was in Valkyrie's possession, she only got it from Doctor Strange in the first place. That's another fun connection. In the comics, an ancient wizard was said to have carved the sword from the tusk of an extra-dimensional dragon, which, come on, is the coolest thing I've said since the witch's crypt on the moon from a few entries ago. In the MCU, Valkyrie's sword is just mainly used for slicing and dicing, but in the comics, it can absorb force when it comes into contact with blood. Blood. It can be summoned back to the user's hand, much like Mjolnir, and holding the sword allows you to ride on Valkyrie's flying horses, so try to find yourself one if you can. When you're Doctor Strange, you're going to spend a lot of time in astral form. It was used in the first movie to great effect a few times, like when Strange meets the Ancient One, or when Christine is trying to save his life. And then we see it later on in other movies, like when the Ancient One separates Bruce from his body, or when Doctor Strange punches Peter out of his body. All I'm saying is, it would help if more people had an astral ring, which is an artifact of Doctor Strange's in the comics that allows him to make contact with people and things even when he's in his astral mode. You know how sequels always try to go bigger and better? Well, I think the best way to establish Multiverse of Madness as the next level in Doctor Strange movies is by introducing another awesome piece of clothing like the Cloak of Levitation. Remember when I said that I want the cloak to have a subplot? Well, maybe this is where Doctor Strange's sash comes into play. In the comics, this sash is basically like a super strong rope that can tie up his enemies and keep them trapped. That seems like it would pair perfectly with the cloak and the two could become the bestest of friends. Or, you know, maybe they'd be jealous of each other? I don't know why we haven't seen the sash yet. Maybe it's because the writers know that if Strange keeps leveling up his superpowered clothes, then we won't view him as an all-powerful sorcerer? Yeah, that's probably it. Though, of course, let's all agree that if the sash isn't in Multiverse of Madness, we all write angry letters to Marvel, deal? You ever have that one friend who's really into tarot cards? Well, this entry is for them. An interesting magical artifact that Strange has is the very first tarot deck ever. It was really a fun addition to Doctor Strange's arsenal at a time where he didn't have a lot of his magical abilities. Instead, he used the first tarot deck to form a really loose team of heroes who could only go on missions when the tarot deck said that they could. Like, if Spider-Man wasn't picked when Doctor Strange drew cards beforehand, then he couldn't go on a mission. That's the kind of kooky artifact I want more of in the MCU. We're getting to the point where Doctor Strange is so powerful that I sense the writers are going to have to nerf him eventually. What better way than to have him lose some of his powers and then rely on things like the first tarot deck? Maybe in Doctor Strange 3? 
The purple gem is last on this list because it has the least interesting name. Like, you couldn't name it the Floating Orb of Violet or something like that? Anyways, this artifact is pretty straightforward. It can transport people to the purple dimension, which, you guessed it, was filled with purple mountain ranges and plum-covered plains. It's ruled by a tyrant who uses the residents of the purple dimension to mine for precious jewels. In the comics, Strange sometimes uses the purple gem to trap bad guys in the purple dimension. Hey, with all the universes we're about to visit, why couldn't the purple universe be one of them?